One of the earliest forms of transportation were birch bark canoes, used by the Mi'kmaq people. Luke and Jock meet up with local artist and birch bark canoe maker Todd Labrador. He's going to teach them a bit about this historic fine craft. This place wow. is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Todd, how did, you, uh, how did you get into this? I started making models. Uh, like this little model needs to be repaired, but it's uh, just a little model birch bark canoe. Of course, these models are much smaller than the real birch bark canoes, which range between 9 and 28 feet. There are two types, an ocean canoe and a lake canoe. So the ocean canoes had uh, a race in the middle like the one behind us here. What was the hump, the purpose of the hump? In the well, uh, say if you had uh, large loads in your canoe, uh, in the middle where they keep their large loads of fur or whatever, raised sides would protect it from getting wet. Okay. Also, um, supposed to help in the waves too. Okay. The Prior to birch bark canoes, they would have used dug out logs. Okay. Like they would have had a log and just hollowed the log out, and that would have been the first canoe. And then when birch bark came along, a thousand years ago or so, um, birch trees started to grow. They, uh, over the years, figured out how to harvest birch bark and, and make canoes. This one here is an um, uh, ocean going style, which an ocean canoe could have been 18 feet right up to about 28 feet long, all out of birch wow. bark. Well, and, big boats. Uh, yeah. I thought birch bark canoes are kind of like my foot's going to go through this paper thin birch bark, but it's lined with like yep. strips of wood going vertically and then they got horizontal ribs as well. It's That's incredibly right. robust. And a lot of people will say that it'll break so easy. And, uh, but they had, they had ribs inside, just like in your body, you have your ribs. They had the planking underneath and then the birch bark itself is uh, up to a quarter inch thick. Yep. Wow. So that's even thicker than the canvas canoes. We used all the roots uh, from the spruce tree. That's what we sew everything together with. Once you sew it together, you need to seal that. So we use spruce gum and a mixture of bear fat and charcoal and spread on over the seam where it's joined together and that would make it waterproof. I noticed you have uh, some ribs that are yeah. hanging in limbo here. That's right. And uh, those ribs we need to put in. So this fit up in there, this one up in here. And uh, then we just shove this here. But uh, so I'll hold this here and get you to hit it with the hammer. Okay. okay. Give the Luke, just, hammer. Just, just hold little. it right there, Luke. Okay, I'll put it on the hammer. There you go. <laughs> just tap it gently. Yeah. Gently? Yep. Gently, gently. There you go. Gentlier. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Traditional canoe makers right yep. here. Now we can say we've built a canoe. We've built a canoe. Is this for shaving or? That's uh, what we call a crooked knife. And that's one of the tools you can use to build a canoe. And I'll show you, very sharp, but uh, uh, the crooked knife and an ax is all you need to build a canoe. And wow. this here, that's amazing. when I was going to make a rib here, I just Look at that. Curve, sure you curve the rib. Yeah. Take your own rib out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know uh, a lot wow. of people will tell us they were always taught to go this way, away yeah. from them. Cut towards your buddy, not your body. Yeah. And, and we never follow <laughs> those rules. We I always see that. do the opposite. And, yeah. But uh, amazing what you can do with crooked knife. One of the reasons why we're here is we want to actually go for a ride in one of these traditional canoes. Is that possible? That's possible. All right. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Choose your weapon. Oh, thank you, Sensei. So uh, this is going to be very interesting. We have no idea what's going to happen, but Luke's going to get wet. That's all I know. Hey, Todd. Hi there. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what we're taking out. This is the canoe you're taking out, and uh, the only thing I would say it's uh, one guy sit in here. Okay. The other guy set up here and make face each face out opposite. Make sure you're facing the same direction. So you're that way, each and other. facing that way. Okay. And Got can it. we do a catwalk? If uh, we both sit on the back end. No, that wouldn't work too good. And uh, this one's quite tippy, so. I don't, we, don't, we don't need any tips. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Excuse the pun. A finished birch bark canoe can be quite large. 
but only weigh around 65 pounds, making them more awkward than heavy to carry. Luke and Jock are catching the drift. Just when things seem like they couldn't be going any better, they decide to attempt a foolish task. We are told that you can stand up and paddle these things, so... Whoa! I don't think we did it right. <laughs> that didn't work. <sighs> well, you're doing pretty good there for a while. <sighs> Canoeing 101. Todd Labrador, Luke and Jack. I don't think it went so well. <laughs> At least it stayed afloat. Yeah. Now one last thing before we go, Todd. Just to prove that you are the birch bark samurai. Turn that into a canoe. And this, okay. we gather these on our travels. Okay. Big or small, Todd has a hand in them all. Didn't need that piece. Man. Holy. That's, that's amazing. The An authentic Todd Labrador birch bark canoe. He is the birch bark ninja. Todd, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was very nice meeting you. It's been a pleasure. Nice meeting you too. You as well. Hop in, bud. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's go. He's a pretty nice guy. You know what? I, I really like Todd. What if he'd adopt us? You know what? You never know. Yeah, you know, we're pretty cute. Yep, we got some pretty mad canoe skills. Yeah, I'm thinking about changing my career. Too. Being Todd. Oh, being Todd. Being Todd. That'd be a good job. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being Todd.